Bienvenidos, Ushamdid, and welcome UMGC learners from the CMIT 455 section 6380 course for the spring 2021 semester. This is the CCMP EN Core version 8 course curriculum from the Cisco Networking Academy. And in this activity, we're going to be taking a deep dive look again at logging and using syslog. Now, this activity has a lot more than syslog. We're going to be taking a look at NetFlow data as well as some AAA activity. And so this is Packet Tracer Activity 24.2.2. .2, and let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the activity as it stands. As you can see, we've got quite a bit going on over here on the right-hand side. So we're gonna be using syslog to capture some log files, and then we're gonna be taking a look at some NetFlow information. Now, the syslog work we just did in our previous activity, 24.2.1, and so I'm gonna move through this at a little quicker pace than I did originally, but I'll be touching on a number of the key points. So. Let's go ahead and on the syslog server, which is located right down here in our topology, let's click on that. And let's open things up a bit here so that we can see the logging information. Now, remember the syslog tab is right here in the middle in terms of services and syslog is currently off. So we're going to turn syslog on. Now, you'll notice in this activity, unlike the previous activity, there's no IP address listed next to the syslog server. In fact, up here, there's no addressing table. And so we're gonna need to gather that information up. And I can do that by going to the desktop and looking at the configuration. And we can see it's 192.168.20.20. And so back to services here, where we're gonna wanna examine syslog messages that are coming into the device. Now remember, there are eight different levels of syslog messages, and they range from the lowest numbered, which is emergency, which is the most severe, to the highest number, which is seven, which represents debugging. And you can see those up here. And again, we talked about those in our previous videos and how you can configure for the trapping and the logging that's taking place, the buffered logging, what's coming to the console, what may be getting sent to uh, your syslog server. So we're going to uh, go ahead and we've enabled syslog. So the devices are already configured to send messages. Okay, so we don't need the IP address. So it looks like the devices are ready to go. But Packet Tracer only supports logging for the debugging severity level with syslog. Because of that, we must generate some debugs. And so we'll go ahead and we'll make that happen. And that's an interesting statement there because in the previous activity, we saw syslog working with Packet Tracer when interfaces were being taken up and down. So that's an interesting statement that it says that Packet Tracer only supports logging for the debugging severity with syslog because we saw something different than that. So, um, I'm not sure why that comment is in there. So we're gonna to have to generate some debugs, which is okay, right? Let's do some debugging. So we're gonna jump onto router one and it looks like EIGRP may be configured here in the environment. So let's stretch that out and let's actually pull the debug window over here so we can keep things going simultaneously. So you can see the dual message right here, the notification severity level, neighbor change. We've got an EIGRP neighbor. And as a review, right, show IP EIGRP neighbors is gonna show me who my EIGRP neighbors are. I can say show IP route EIGRP to see if we've learned any EIGRP routes and take a look at that. It looks like the core switch is probably providing us, uh, if it's a multi-layer switch, maybe it's running EIGRP, or it may be that this uh, router running the zone-based firewall might have something to do with that. And we could come over here and check on this guy. You can see there's some issues there. Uh, show IP route. And how about a show IP route EIGRP? So no EIGRP, my guess is we're getting everything from the core switch, so let's take a look there. Again, yeah, you can see there's the EIGRP information, show IP EIGRP, oops, sorry. EIGRP neighbor, and that's exactly what's going on there. So again, just understanding a little bit better uh, what it is we're gonna be taking a look at. So we're gonna debug IP, uh, oops, sorry, they want EIGRP packets. So not a lot of debug support in Packet Tracer, but that's okay. 
uh, we're going to go ahead and kick things off here. And as you would expect, what are we seeing? Well, we're seeing the sending and receiving, right? So here's received hello packets. Here are sent hello packets. And again, with EIGRP, we're talking every five seconds that a message would be going out. So those are the debugs. Uh, but again, we've got the syslog on here, but nothing happening. So uh, it says the command line console will immediately fill with debug messages. Return to the syslog server window. Verify the entries appear. So I don't see anything. Okay, so we go out of the window, come back in, and now we're seeing all of these EIGRP messages. Let me clear it, and we'll go DNS, syslog, and we'll see if... And there we go. So we're seeing the EIGRP hello messages. Well, how do we stop the debug? You can say you all, and that stands for undebug all. And the option we're looking for is undebug all. But it's just you space all is going to accomplish the same thing and give you control of the terminal back. So here are the EIGRP messages, right? And all we're capturing are these hello messages. So what information is included in the syslog messages? Well, again, we've got the host name from which these syslog messages are being generated. In fact, if I come over here and say show IP interface brief, you can see 192.168.11.2. That is who is sending these syslog messages. And Inside this uh, packet here, or this syslog message, I should say, you can see that it's telling us, hey, we are receiving a hello message. We've got our timestamp here, which is um, fantastically out of sync here, right? So the time was never set on this device. In fact, if I say show clock, you can see that it's still showing uh, the coordinated universal time, however, from March 93. So maybe setting the time here would have been a good idea with that clock set command so that we've got accurate logs coming in. All right, so we're gonna log user access. Now, and again, we went over the syslog before, which is why we're not gonna spend very much time on it. Refer to that previous video. We did a much deeper dive about how to set up where the logging information is going. In fact, if I say show run include log, you can see here, there's our trap, right? Logging, trap, debugging, and then logging to the host 192.168.20.20. All right, so we're going to check on user access at this point, right? And this is with our AAA server. And so I think we're going to be using the syslog server, in fact. All right, so TACAX, which we're going to be talking about more in depth when we get into some of the last, in fact, I think it's the last packet tracer activity where our focus is all about AAA, right? Authentication, accounting, and authorization. And so here we're going to be leveraging the syslog server to serve as our TACAX plus server, right? Or our radius server. It could be either, right? But here we're going to be using TACAX. And we refer, typically you hear people say just TACAX, but it's understood that it's TACAX plus because TACAX, uh, there was a TACAX before TACAX plus, uh, but now it's TACAX plus that is used. All right. So we're going to select that syslog server. Uh, we're already at the services tab. We're already at the AAA, and you can see the service is on. Here's our radius port number information. And here is the TACAX information. And you can see down here, this is where we have our user information because the user is going to be authenticated using this TACAX database. So uh, what are they going to ask us to do here? So we're going to enter the following credentials. And this is interesting, right? It says, enter the following user credentials. Oh, wait, that's after the, uh, sorry, after we looked at this tab. I was thinking I was going to say they've already got it in here. So we're going to go to router number two now. And let's pull router number two down here. And let's see what router two is set up to do. So admin and then ccmp underscore eight. So we've now logged in. If I say show run include triple A, you can see that we're using the new model of AAA, of authentication, authorization, and accounting. And yes, there is an old model. And the old model is simply just creating sort of a username password on the either console line or the VTY line. So that's kind of the old, you know, I'm doing the air quotes here, the old model. But AAA new model is when we're using a TACAX or a radius server to do some authentication for us. And you can see here, we've got the AAA authentication 
on login, on what activity, login in the default group, TACAX Plus. And then finally, if the TACAX Plus server is unreachable, right? Not if it gets denied, but if the TACAX Plus server is unreachable, then there's no authentication, right? And that's what that none at the end means there. And then here's our accounting. And you can see we're going to be doing accounting for the group TACAX, which is right up here, right? And who's logging in? So if I was to pull the syslog server back up and we'll slide that over here, we'll go back to our syslog tab and then let's pull up router number two. And you can see it says, enter the following credentials, return to the syslog server's AAA accounting records window what information is in the log entry. So they actually want us not in the syslog window, but in the triple A window. And the, whoops, sorry, with the services, I want triple A and we want the accounting. Let me make sure I've got that right. Sorry, the triple A accounting records window. So what does that show? Well, the records window, wait a second, where did that go? Yeah, so I'm looking here for the AAA records window. Return to the syslog server, AAA accounting records window. What information is in the log entry? And let's make sure that they're not talking about, it wouldn't be the CDP. Yeah, it's not the CDP, let's clear the log. It's not that, the AAA window. and the accounting tab. So it's interesting, I don't see an accounting tab here, or an account, accounting records window, unless, oops, sorry, unless they're referring to just this window, which I don't think they are, because it says what information is in the log entry. Unless it's that. But that's not, I don't think that's it. So again, it's asking for this accounting window. I don't see that accounting window. So we'll go ahead and move past that. Um, so what information is in the log entry? Well, what would we expect to see? We would expect to see router two, right? The user that just logged in over here. Uh, admin, we'd expect to see something for that. On R2, enter the logout command. So let's type in logout. Oops, sorry. And let's step back over to the AAA window. Ah, it's down here. Well, actually, it's not even down there. And it's not up here either. So let's pop out and then pop back in. Yeah, so I don't see this tab that they're talking about here. And I'm wondering if maybe it's a, a, a packet tracer, not a packet tracer problem, but my version of packet tracer maybe, even though it's 731 is what I'm using. So we don't see that, and that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, because we've got the network configuration, we've got the user setup down here, we've got the TACAC server there, uh, and there is no sort of accounting records window unless that's the window we're supposed to be in. All right, well, we'll move on to NetFlow and virtualization. So. Once again, we're going to go to the syslog server. I'll bring it over here so we can see what we're doing. And so NetFlow is an amazing tool. If you've got a third-party um, management software suite like a SolarWinds, like a WhatsApp Gold, you can get some really, really rich information. Now, with NetFlow, there are two versions of NetFlow. Version 5 which is the legacy version. And I should say there's two versions we're interested in. Version five, which is the legacy version, and then version nine, which provides much more granularity in terms of the information that you can derive from the output. So, and I think this is great that, that we're gonna turn some network, uh, NetFlow on here in the network. So let's go to the syslog uh, server. We're gonna close the AAA accounting records window which th this has got to be the AAA accounting records window, but we didn't see anything log here. All right, so from the desktop tab, 
from the desktop tab, uh, which is where we are at, select NetFlow controller. Let's pop back over here. And hold on one second. There it is. Okay, here's the accounting window. Okay, I knew it had to be in here somewhere. So what we were doing previously, right? We're looking at the syslog server. I was looking at the services window. It's asking me to look at the accounting records window, which to get to it, you'd go to the desktop and there's the accounting. I thought it would be a tab inside the services area. It's not. And so here's the record that you can see, right? Admin logged in. It starts the session from who? Uh, it's coming from 12.2 and it's on console zero. And then when the session stops, when I log out, we get that message. So here's that AAA accounting records window. All right. So I'm glad we got that covered. So we're going to go to the desktop tab. We're going to look at the NetFlow collector. And so here it is right down here with the little graph, and it's going to show us all kinds of fantastic information about source addresses, conversations taking place. Uh, and, and again, that's what you would see in sort of a, a robust third-party solution like a solar winds. Okay, so from the desktop, we're going to look at the NetFlow collector. Be sure that the NetFlow collector service is turned on, which it is. From any PC in the corporate uh, I'm sorry, from any PC, ping the corporate web server. And so I'm going to go ahead and type in ping, and the corporate web server is 209.165.200.194. So let's go ahead and do that. And this traffic should be allowed through. And there it is. Uh, and so after a brief delay, the pie chart will update and show the new traffic flow. Let me see if I can do a ping-t if it supports that. 209.165.200.194. Uh, and so the dash T with the ping, and I love the fact that it supports it, it is a continuous ping. So we come over here and let's close the window and then pop back in. And maybe we're seeing some additional information. So the source address. And what is PC 2.2? What is the IP of PC 2.2? Let's take a look here at the... So it's 12.19 is the IPv4 address of PC 2. And are we still pinging? We are still pinging away. So let's take a look and see if we see any traffic here. There's 20.20 .20 is the IPv4 source, 1.2. 12.2, let's punch out and then we'll come back and see if we can get it to maybe refresh for us. Yeah, because I'm not seeing 2020, 12, 2, and 1, 2. And let's make sure we're looking at the right. Yeah, so the IPv4 address is 1219. And so that's what it says right here. After a brief delay, the pie chart will update we'll come back in here and oh let's turn the service back on look like i turned it off accidentally there so we'll turn the service back on uh click the segments of the pie chart to view the information about each flow and again this is very basic information that you're seeing here with kind of the source destination thing going on uh and it looks like oops sorry i didn't want that I wanted it over here at the syslog server let me come back over here i forgot i was on the pc so we'll turn that off we don't need that we need the ping's running. So even back here at the syslog server, we're kind of waiting to see. And we don't really see that PC's information here. And we don't see anything going to the web server. And it looks like it might be updating. But again, yeah, this is just kind of showing us information, but it's not showing us information based on that ping that we're actually running. And so I'm kind of closing it out and opening it back up in the hopes that uh, we're gonna see PC2 there and we just, we simply don't. And again, that's okay, but this is what NetFlow will allow you to accomplish. And there's a lot of rich information here, right? You can see we've got the source address, the destination address, the percentage of the traffic uh, that it is responsible for. Yeah, and again, nothing going out to the web server. 
which is interesting because again, we've got that, and you can see it's lighting up here. We've got the continual ping going. So we'll go ahead and leave that where it's at. Uh, we clicked on the segments, what information is provided by NetFlow. It's all kind of right there. And again, down here, we've got this note. The information displayed uh, may vary based on traffic on the network. Related to our presence on the devices, NetFlow is capturing these packets. Okay, so again, the longer it runs, the more stats we're going to be capturing. Uh, but I'm not going to be belabor the point that we don't see the ping that we're running over here, that we're seeing all this other information. But you can see it is updating, right? It, when it disappears, hopefully we're getting that updated information. All right. Well, that is going to do it for this activity. You can see there's no completion percentage uh, down in the lower right-hand side. This was more of an exploratory type activity for us to do. Uh, but again, we saw a lot of good stuff. We got to do syslog again. We got to take a look at AAA. We found the AAA accounting window uh, for TAC, AX, and RADIUS. That was important. And then we took a look at some NetFlow information that can be gathered up. All right, well, that is going to do it for Packet Tracer Activity 24.2.2, .2, and that's it for Module 6. All right, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.